Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is about storage element. So before going to the topic, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on. And if you have any doubts, comment down below. I will respond within 24 hours. So now let's go into the topic. So what's a storage element? A storage element is a digital circuit which can maintain a binary state indefinitely as long as power is delivered to the circuit until directed by an input signal to switch states. So that's the definition of the storage element and if you want to watch it again there you go. A storage element is a digital circuit which can maintain a binary state indefinitely as long as power is delivered to the circuit until directed by an input signal to switch states. So that definition is big. So a simple definition of a storage element is that a repetition of something for a while that's what it is called as a memory. So a storage element is a memory and it is called as a repetition of a certain value for a while that is the storage element. So I hope you understood. So how can we design a basic storage element with it using a simple circuit. So let's discuss about it. So as you can see over here I have two inverters V in one is the input and V out two is the output of this elements. So the inverter is converting one value to its complement value and another inverter is converting that complement value into the normal value and it is fed back as the input. So as you can see V in one gets the input from V out two. So it is in feedback and forever it will be continuing the same value until we break the circuit and give a certain value. So this is the basic memory element or you can call as a, a basic storage element or a sequential circuit since it's fed back. So now let us analyze this circuit first digitally. As you can see we have V in as one of the input V in one and V in two as another input. So V in one V in two is the output of the first inverter and V out two that will be the input for the first inverter. Okay now let's give the values and check what will be the values. Let's say V in one is low. So when V in one is low, V out one will be high. So V out one will be carried as the input for the next. So V in two will also be high. So V in two is also high, V out two will be low, okay? So we are giving low as the input, we are getting low as output. So it is able to store a certain value in it forever until we disturb it externally. Now let's say V in 1 is high, what will be V out 2? So V out 2 will be low and V in 2 also will be low because both are same and V in 2 is passed through an inverter, we will get high once again. So by this analysis, you can see that whatever value we are giving to it, it will be stay in it forever until we disturb it. So what if, if you want to load a new value into the storage element? So how can we load a new value? Suppose it is zero. How we want to load a new value one into it? So how to load a storage value? To load a new value, we need to break the feedback temporarily. So breaking the feedback is important and load a new value by giving it through the data in. Whatever the data we want to load, load it and break the feedback so that we will get the new value. And once the value is being through the inverters, we can turn on the feedback again and turn off the load. So that's how we can add a new value to the circuit. So one more important thing before going to the analog analysis that this circuit is called as a bistable element because it is giving us two values and it is stable at low or high. That's it. It is bistable. So this is a bistable element. So now let's draw a transfer function so that we can analyze it more better. Now let us analyze the bistable element in analog point of view. So we have two inverters one and two. So this is a normal linear fashion representation. So I have stacked up the two inverters and this is the most of the storage elements look like in your textbook. So if you replace this NOT gate with an AND gate or a NOR gate you might be getting SR latch based upon your inputs or you might be getting a D latch JK or T flip flop or other latches okay so now let us discuss about this bistable element and we will draw the transfer functions for both the inverters inverter 1 and inverter 2 before drawing the transfer function let us look at the inverter first how it works so as you can see over here we have the inverter with two transistors that is CMOS that is PMOS and NMOS 
okay this is pmos and this is nmos and we have input v in and v out as the output vdd is the power supply and here we have ground so when v in is equal to zero this will not conduct and it will become an open circuit as you can see over here it is in the cutoff region and it will be an open circuit so when v in equals to zero we will get the power from vdd and v out equals to vdd so in this case i have considered a basic assumptions that vdd is equals to 5 volts and threshold voltage of an nmos equals to 1 volt and threshold voltage of pmos equals to minus 1 volts so now you can see that we are getting when v in equals to zero v out equals to vdd and when v in equals to vdd that means pmos will not conduct and nmos will conduct so V out is directly connected to ground and V out equals to zero. So this is the basic functions of CMOS inverter. So now let us go and draw the transfer function. So now let us draw when V in equals to zero. That means PMOS is on and NMOS is off. So let us draw till threshold voltage. So I'm considering till this point as one case. So after the threshold voltage, what happens is that the NMOS will start conducting. So this NMOS will start conducting, but note this point that it will not short circuit immediately. So the current will not flow as fast as you think. If you know the transfer function of an NMOS, so this is the transfer function of an NMOS. As you can see, when VGS is greater than VTN slightly, uh, the ID is not increasing fastly it is increasing slowly so because of this small increase we cannot see that there is a direct connection that means it's not short-circuited yet so now let us say that it is reduced by a small amount but not connected to ground so if the voltage level increases threshold voltage that means there will be a decrease in the voltage and it will keep on decreasing okay so it will keep on decreasing but why did i stop till vdd by 2 at this point there is a difference in normal functionality of cmos okay cmos inverter at this point what happens is that both vdd and ground are connecting that means pmos and nmos are connecting and ground and vdd are short circuited so that's the biggest problem as a result this point is metastable point okay if a small amount of voltage given either high or low it will go to zero or one so this point is very critical point we will look at it uh, after drawing the next one so after what happens is that at this point both of the pmos and nmos are in saturation region so after this the nmos needs to go to the linear region and pmos need to go to the cutoff region so we will keep on increasing the v in and what happens is that v out one will start decreasing so uh, we have increased the v in till vdd so v out is becoming zero so that is a similar case we need to draw for the inverter two this is for inverter one so before going to draw how are we going to draw as you can see that v out is a transfer function so v out one is transfer function of v in one so now let us see v in one is equals to v out two here we are going to change the inputs and outputs now and draw the same diagram so v in one equals to what it's v out two and v out one is the input for the second inverter so v out two one will be v in two okay so v in two is the v out one so now let us draw the transfer function in a similar fashion but it will be just the inverter because inputs are changed so this is the transfer function for v in two and v out two v in two is high over here so v out two is low and when v in two is reducing then v out 2 is increasing this point is vdd okay okay so this is the transfer functions now as you can see that this both transfer functions are meeting at three points at this point at this point and this point so we have two stable states this point and this point that is when vdd and at zero so this point is meta stable this point at vdd by 2 is meta stable the main reason is that if we give a small amount of voltage that means let us consider v in if we give a small amount of voltage in this fashion if we reduce the small amount of voltage then we are going to go to this stable state one and if we are given 
a small amount of voltage in this direction then we are going to go to the stable state zero at the output and this will be reflected in the next inverter and this will be a regeneration process so we are not able to decide what will be the output even a small amount of a noise or a crosstalk can change the output so this condition is called as a metastable condition so metastable condition is represented as a, a ball on a hill and let us consider this surface is a polished okay if we give a push then this ball will land on this flat surface that is a stable state okay and if we give a push in this direction the ball will land over here that is another stable state so this is how our circuit functions so when it is in metastable condition that is at VDD by 2 as you can see both the VDD and ground are short circuited as a result it will lead a big problem because both the PMOS and NMOS are in saturation region over here so a small amount of voltage change can change the stability either from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 and that is not in control of the designer and that might lead to a, a large problems in the design so we need to be careful with metastable conditions and we need to design properly so that our circuit doesn't go into the metastable conditions as a result we have timing problems we need to solve all the timing problems using synchronizers or FIFOs okay this is the basics about a storage element so if you have any doubts comment down below I'll respond within 24 hours thank you for watching the video till the end and thank you so much to get connected subscribe and turn your notifications on I hope this is valuable for you so if you want more about this inverter, I can talk more about this inverter in detail, but it will take more amount of time. So if you want this inverter to be discussed more clearly, I can do it. It will take at least an hour of time. So if you are ready to watch an one hour video, comment down below one hour. I will make an inverter video within two, one, within one week. Okay. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. Thanks for watching.